We're gonna continue this series today, Kingdom Mentality. And over the last two weeks, Pastor Chris has done a, a masterful job at, at helping us understand what it looks like and what it really sounds like to be kingdom people and, and what it means to be righteous in God's eyes, what it means to adopt our series scripture and, and really let it resonate in our hearts. And, and if you don't know our series scripture, go ahead and throw it up there. We're gonna uh, read over it. You don't have to read it out loud, but for the kingdom of God is not a matter of what we eat or drink, but rather it's actually a matter of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And I believe that when Paul was writing to the church in Rome, I think Man, he gave, us some, he gave us some ingredients here. I truly believe whenever I was reading this and, and praying about, God, where do you wanna take this? I, I, had, this, I had this illustration that I had been kinda, uh, I don't know, in my spirit that I had seen, and I was like, man, God, does this, does this fit? Will this work? And, and I really, truly believe God has just revealed this, and, and first service seemed to like it, so I think you'll like it too, but I truly believe Paul wrote us out a, a recipe to, to really truly be who God has called us to be and to operate with this mentality of kingdom-mindedness, kingdom living. And so I, I have this illustration up here and, and I'm gonna show you, it was funny, Kelsey was looking at it, she goes, it looks like you're about to do a magic trick. Like, all right. Somebody else said, uh, whenever you revealed everything, it was like, man, welcome to heaven's kitchen because we're gonna talk about some some food today, get it, Hell's Kitchen, but we'll just see. anyway, some, some of y'all are like, oh, okay, thanks, Will, appreciate it. But today, I wanna talk about some ingredients that I truly believe that we face. We face today, and this is gonna be fun. But, but here's the thing. I think Paul wrote this in response to what Jesus talked about in John chapter 16. And, and let's go ahead and read that. He said to his disciples, I have told you. Now again, he was talking to his disciples in this moment in verse 33, but this applies to us. I have told you, New Hope Church, that all of this so that you may have peace in me. Like I've, I've told you these things, I've reminded you of these things because here on earth you will have trials and sorrows. Jesus was an encourager. Thanks God, that's so good. I'm gonna face stuff, I'm gonna go through life, it's gonna be hard, it's gonna be difficult at times. That's okay. It's okay, watch this, because you gotta continue reading the word. Don't just get stuck in your trials and sorrows, mully grubbing in your mess, come on. But take heart, because I have overcome the world. So we can have peace in knowing what Jesus has accomplished for you. Hey, I'm setting you up, I'm just letting you know, you're gonna go through it. Wait, Jesus, wait a second. Well, I, Pastor Chris, I thought that whenever I got saved that I, didn't, I wasn't gonna face nothing or I wasn't gonna go through this life because now I'm a Christian. Baby, when you accepted Jesus, you painted a target on your back. <laughs> and, and now, guess what? You don't have to go through this life alone because though you may have a target, you got Jesus on your side who is representing you in everything that you do. So you don't have to be scared or worried about the trials that may come because you can have peace in him. That's just my introduction. We hadn't even talked about the ingredients. So let's go there. Today's message is entitled Kingdom Ingredients. And I want you to, to be reminded, we're gonna go through this series scripture and I'm just gonna break it down for, for every little thing that, that we go through in this life. But watch this. I believe when Paul wrote this, Romans chapter 14, verse 17, he says, for the kingdom of God, go there again if you will, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of what you eat or drink, which is hilarious that we're talking about ingredients and food today, but it's not about what you eat or drink. <laughs> for the kingdom of God is, is not a matter of what we eat or drink. Here's the thing, I think that we look most like the kingdom of God when we are the salt of the earth. In fact, Jesus talked about that in Matthew. We look like the kingdom of God when we are the salt of the earth. Got some salt here for us. Straight up stole this out of the pantry. Kelsey said, what are you doing? Because literally, I stole all the salt. And then we were trying to cook dinner the other day and she goes, where is the, you took the salt. I was like, yeah, I did. 
Sorry about that. It, it tastes as bad as it looks. <laughs> like I just swallowed the whole Gulf of Mexico. You know what I'm talking about. You get hit in the face with that. And all of a sudden, thank God I have some water. I'm okay. You will, you will see me drink the most water I've ever drank in a message. Just because... We're gonna go through all this. But listen, you look, you look most like the kingdom of God when you are the salt of the earth. In fact, Colossians chapter four, verse six says, let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt. Come on, y'all immediately go to that little meme, the guy with the hair and the glasses and he's like this, right? <laughs> immediately, the salt of the earth, let your, let your speech be seasoned with salt so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. So a little salt goes a long way. Come on, somebody. Salt on your eggs in the morning tastes awesome. Salt in your gumbo, come on, somebody, tastes awesome. Too much salt, I don't like it. Not enough salt, your gumbo's bland. I don't like that either. So we need to meet in the middle, people. Come on, Cajuns know a little something about salt and seasoning. Don't, don't act like I'm not talking to nobody today. You understand. Like, oh yeah, this, this message is gonna hit. I really understand it. So you understand the concept of what salt can and cannot do, okay? It, can't, it can mess up a meal, but it can make a meal just right. Just like it can make your speech right, come on. Mark 9, 50 says salt is good, but if salt has lost its flavor, how will you make it salty again? Have salt, Jesus says, in yourselves and be at peace with one another. D did you understand that, that peace and salt, can, it can go hand in hand. But sometimes when there's too much salt, you can be salty. Oh, you knew I was gonna go there. <laughs> Come on, church people. Sometimes we get a little too salty looking, every, looking at everybody with your uh, righteous, staunch living. Looking, every, looking down at your nose like, Mm, looking like I just looked whenever I had salt. That's what we look like as religious people walking in church. <laughs> like, hey, you been sucking on a lemon? <laughs> Fix your face. <laughs> we say it often and I say it often. Remind your face you love Jesus because it needs to be told because I don't think the salvation that you received is matching your face. Sometimes I just wanna walk around like, Sorry, I had to. I'm gonna like make a chain. I'm gonna put it right here. I'm blinding some people right now. It's like hitting the light. It's like, oh, thanks. Exactly, that's what you look like. <laughs> you need to look in the mirror because sometimes your, your face doesn't match up with, with the Jesus that you say you have in you. Nor does your speech match what you say you have in you in Jesus. And so we've got to get to this place where it's, we're not too salty walking in here like a bunch of salty saints. We're, we're, we're just right. Come on, you know that gumbo that just tastes just right. Being the salt of the earth is operating like a king's kid, knowing who the king, what the kingdom of God is for, and knowing that it's not a matter of what you eat or drink, but it's, and it's not a matter of what's going on around me. It's not a matter of what I wear or what I don't wear, or what I've been through and who my parents are, what side of the tracks I grew up on. Come on, it's, this kingdom is not about what I've been through or gone through or who I'm related to. This kingdom is made up of men and women like you that have been through something, that have a story to tell somebody around them that God can do something miraculous in my life. The kingdom of God is using what has happened to me, not using it as an excuse or justification, but using it as a launch pad to be who he's called me to be. I'm here because of who he's called me to be, to be different, to be set apart, unashamed, and I'm gonna live like Jesus called me to live. Now, the next ingredient that, that I really feel like Paul was helping us, helping set up here was something I get excited about. Y'all, I am a kid when it comes to sugar. Come on, somebody. I like to put about two cups of this in my sweet tea. 
Yes, Lord. When it comes to candy, mm, yes, Lord. There is like a whole thing of like candy in that room back there that I just like to munch on. I'm fine. See, here's the thing about sugar. And I know my mama never told me, she, she never told me, she told me not to speak with my food in my mouth. Sugar's different though. Um, the prop, hang on. I gotta save water because I got more ingredients. Here's the thing about sugar. Sugar, like, is good. And I, y'all, I love sugar. Y'all, I'm lucky I'm not 800 pounds because I really love sugar. Like, Pastor Chris makes fun of me sometimes. He's like, bro, you are a child. I'm like, I know I can't help it. I just love, like, when it comes to my birthday, like, Kelsey knows, peanut butter and chocolate cake load me up, inject it into my veins. <laughs> I, for real, y'all, like, re- I'm a sucker for some Reese's. Some milk chocolate, like, it's good, y'all. But I, here's, the, here's the problem. The problem is, I don't know when to stop. You know, like, my wife, she's eating all healthy and good and stuff. I come, I come to the bed, you know, she's like, she's chilling. She's just like, you know, fasting, you know, and being all holy and spiritual and all that stuff. I'm like, that's awesome. And I come to, to the bed with a piece of cake and some cookies and some milk. And I'm like, she's like, what is wrong with you? And I'm like, sorry, I'm a sucker for sugar. <laughs> fasting is hard for me, okay? I don't know if you know that or not, but it really is. But here's the problem. I know I shouldn't be eating all that. I know sh- too much sugar is it's bad for me, y'all. But I do it anyways. I do it anyways. I eat it. Oh my gosh, I eat so much of it. And how many of us do that same thing when it comes to unrighteousness? I know it hit me too whenever I wrote it. Because because Paul helps us understand, hey, you look most like the kingdom of God when you are righteous. But yet when it comes to unrighteous living, ooh. But I know, Weston, I know I shouldn't do that. Weston, I, I know I shouldn't go there. I, I know I shouldn't talk like that. I know I shouldn't hang out with those people. I know I shouldn't go there. I know I shouldn't follow those people. I know I shouldn't post that. Come on. I know I shouldn't do all of these things. I know I shouldn't drink that, smoke that, do that, but yet I do it anyway. Yeah. But, and here's the thing. I'm not gonna be here long because Pastor Chris preached an incredible message last, last week on righteousness. I encourage you, go back and watch it. But the problem with this is if we want to look like the kingdom and sound like the kingdom, then it's not about what's going on around us or what my past looks like or what I constantly go to on an everyday basis. But the kingdom of God in my life looks like me being righteous. Instead of saying, oh, I know I shouldn't, but yet I do it anyway. No, we've got to change the script of our life. And again, the kingdom of righteousness looks like us living how Jesus lived. And watch this, Romans chapter one, verse 17, we ended this way, our message last week, Romans chapter one says, for the gospel, the gospel, the good news, the life and the message and the example of Jesus Christ, it is the gospel that reveals the righteousness of God. It is his, his lifestyle that reveals us, reveals to us that we can look like this. And then watch that, it comes by faith from start to finish, beginning and end, just as it is written, the righteous. It's you, it's me, it's, it's the righteous that will live by faith. And listen, if God calls you that, if God has put you in that identification, then we should walk in that. If that's how he's called us to live, he's called us to live righteous, then why shouldn't that be our identity every day? So we've gotta to get to this place where we understand that it's, it's the life and the, the words of Jesus, the gospel it reveals unto us by faith that I could be righteous, that I could be faithful, and I can live this life how he's called me to live. Now the next ingredient that's a part of this passage of scripture is something I, I found is to be a little spicy, is cinnamon. C- cinnamon, stop it, it's cinnamon. Um, now here's the thing, I'm not gonna end up on TikTok. I'm not gonna end up on a reel, I know better, right? Some of y'all are like, oh, I hear y'all whispering, okay? 
I'm still in the room, okay? I may be on the platform, but I'm still here. So here's the thing. I'm not gonna do the cinnamon challenge because that you, you can't, okay? That's like a tablespoon of cinnamon. You gotta do just a little dash. A little, that's still a little too much. Okay, here we go. I'm glad this is entertaining to you. <laughs> you ever eaten Big Red? It's like eating a whole pack of Big Red. That's what it's like. That, that is... That is spicy. You gotta do a little, little, little dash. Kinda like Kelsey. So for those of you who don't know. <laughs> Kelsey drinks, she drinks cinnamon. She does a little cinnamon in her, in her coffee. Just a little dash, just a little dash. She drinks her coffee like she likes her husband. It's a little spicy, a little spicy. While y'all are laughing, I'm gonna drink some more water. Here's the thing about cinnamon. Here's the thing about the spice, right? Because it is a little, like, it'll catch you if you're not careful. Like, I don't see how people do that, ingest the whole thing. Like, too much cinnamon is too much, right? But a little dash, a little sprinkle, a little, a little something, something. Like, that's enough to just, ooh, catch you just right. But here's the problem. Too many times we get, we get spicy. When we get overwhelmed, when we get... Man, just flabbergasted at what's going on around us. Oh my gosh, I don't know what else to do. We get sharp, we get snappy. Kind of like last night when I was watching that game. I know, you knew I was gonna bring it up. Kelsey was like, what is wrong with you? I was like, I'm watching the game and we're losing. She's like, well, maybe you should stop watching the game, okay? And then I said, you're not my mom. <laughs> and then I turned it off. Uh, <laughs> what was funny is we were, we were decorating for Christmas, right? And you got like, it's all supposed to be joyful and happy and I'm watching this stupid game and I'm like, <laughs> at least I'd probably hit something when I throw it. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm working on being better. Anyway, but, but when you're overwhelmed at what's going on currently in your situation, you can get a little, a little spicy. You can get a little sharp, a little snappy. And I believe that Paul wrote this scripture for us, that when we're facing all of these things, when I'm overwhelmed, I don't have to be sharp, I don't have to be snappy at other people, guess what? I need his peace in my life. I could be so overwhelmed and taken back by what's going on around me. My bank account doesn't look like it's supposed to, hello. We get a little nervine, we get a little, uh, I don't know what else to do. But here's the problem. We get so overwhelmed, but yet God has called us to have peace, to have peace in him, peace that surpasses all understanding. In fact, there's a story in the Bible that I often quote, especially, specifically when I'm praying, because if there's anything that, that we deal with as a church, it is we get so overwhelmed by things that are going on around, by what we eat and drink, by all the stuff. And here's, here's the thing. There's a passage in scripture in Matthew chapter eight, Luke, uh, Mark chapter four, and Luke eight. If it's in three out of the four gospels, I think it's probably pretty important. Yeah. So here's what we learn. Jesus had been preaching to the masses all day long. My man is tired. My man is exhausted. Kind of like Pastor Chris. Whenever he gets done preaching three, it's like working an eight hour day, y'all. It's hard, okay? We're pouring our guts out up here. And we want a nap. I just want a nap. At the end of the week, you need a nap. Come on, that is healthy, that is spiritual and godly. And I just wanna sleep the sleep of the righteous like Jesus was in that boat. What happens is they get in a boat and they start crossing the Sea of Galilee and Jesus falls asleep because he's tired from literally ministering all day and ministering to people. And the story goes, there was a storm that wells up, swells up on the Sea of Galilee. And the disciples are freaking out because the rain's coming, winds are blowing, and they are about to die. And they mess up. You done messed up now, A.A. Ron. They mess up. <laughs> Some of y'all find that hilarious. <laughs> if you don't know what it is, it's okay. You don't have to look it up. So what happens is they wake Jesus up in Mark chapter four, verse 38. They wake him up and they said, Jesus, do you not care that we are perishing if you wake up from a nap 
it's one thing to be like, hey, good morning, <laughs> right? Like my daughters, like I wake them up, rub their back. You wanna be sweet, you wanna be subtle. The disciples wake Jesus up by yelling at him. Do you not care? <laughs> We're gonna die. <laughs> Just like a, a couple weeks ago, me and uh, <laughs> Kelsey's younger brother, we were up in North Louisiana and something very traumatic happened at Walmart, at the Walmart gas station. Come on, that's where, that's where it goes down. <laughs> Pastor Chris and the kids, they were up there, we're all hunting and doing a bunch of family stuff and hanging out and he had just woken up from a nap and we're like, Chris, you'll never believe what happened. And he was like, I'm gonna need y'all to chill out. <laughs> y'all are, are up here and I just woke up. I'm like, oh, yeah, sorry. That's what Jesus felt like. I know, I saw it, okay? I have seen the face of tired. So Jesus is, is, he's like, guys, all right. I don't know if he calmed the storm because he was mad or if he calmed the storm because he was like, bro, this is, this is too much. But watch what happens. He awoke and he immediately rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace be still. Right? She loved it. <laughs> or he, I don't know, it's one of them. So, <laughs> and the wind ceased and there was a great calm. That, that's what I love about Jesus is that there's no delay in what he says in your life and what he speaks to the storms and the craziness and the chaos of what you feel like may be around you. Jesus can speak today and let me prophesy over you today. There is a peace that can be calm over your life right now that if you just declare it and proclaim it and walk in it, guess what? You don't have to face what's going on around you. You don't have to be worried. You don't have to be sharp and snappy and spicy at everything else and yell at everybody around you. You can walk in peace because God's made it available for you. That's right. Amen. So sometimes you just gotta declare, God, I'm gonna have a peaceful day. I don't care what these crazy people do around me. <laughs> Some, sometimes you just gotta go ahead and declare it for yourself. And that is, y'all, I kid you not, when my babies are worried, when Kelsey's stressed, when we're going through, when she told me the other day, we got this, we got this bill that we did not account for. It caught us off guard. You know what, I, I, just, I just told her, I was like, you know what? It's gonna be okay, baby. You know why? Peace, peace be still in your life. She's like, don't preach at me. Don't preach at me. I don't need that right now. <laughs> You're too blessed to be stressed. She said, what did I say? Stop it. No, but you can operate in peace. And again, all you have to do is call upon his name. And I, I truly believe that, that Paul was trying to help us with this. The next thing that I wanna talk to you about today, the next ingredient, it's chocolate chips. Yeah, I know, right? No, no. It's not milk chocolate. That's, see, that's the thing. Some of y'all like, just like sugar, like, ooh, that, okay. And some of you weirdos that like dark chocolate, okay, like, back up. Because this is not milk chocolate. There's no sugar in this. This is baker's chocolate. It says semi-sweet on the package. It's not sweet. It's not even semi-sweet. It's not. It's... It's it, Y'all said it, it's bitter. It's okay, it's okay. Y'all watched it Saturday. I'm gonna eat one more just to appease y'all. <laughs> Need some coffee to wash that down. <laughs> That's gonna stay with me till after service. Here's the thing. We taste that and we, ooh, we operate in that same thing every day. Sometimes we just bitter. Sometimes we operate in bitterness. Baker's chocolate, this ingredient makes me think of all the things that we go through in life. And we don't become better, we get bitter over it. We, we get to this place and, and Paul helps us understand this, that if you wanna combat bitterness in your life, if you wanna, the antithesis of bitterness in your life is joy. That if you wanna look and sound like the kingdom of God and walk and operate in that mentality, it's going to combat it with joy in your life. Because watch this, people that are bitter and people that are joyful cannot coexist in the same person. You can't be bitter over what happened to you, but yet I'm operating in the joy of the Lord. No, it's, it, it's, not, gonna, it's not gonna work. Like last night, literally, Kelsey was like, you need to get over yourself. You need to go woosah in your room or something. Like you need to figure it out. Because right now, you are, you are affecting everyone else around you with the, the, the bitterness that you have. And I, I was, y'all, I was bitter. 
I was like, Lord, help me be better. But it was one of those things that I had to deal with it. Kind of like this. Has anybody ever seen him inside out? Come on, y'all, y'all see, I see, I see some hand. Not, so, so here's the thing. We have three little girls. We watch, we watch all the, the appropriate Disney shows. How crazy is that, that we say, have to say that these days? But we, we're watching Inside Out, and it's not a coincidence that joy is the main emotion. It's also not a coincidence, and I, I truly believe God is in this. It's not a coincidence that, that the core memories that you have in your life are often related to the joyful moment, moments that you have. The core memories of your life, play it back. Sure, there's some, there's some things that have, that have happened that you could go to and say, that wasn't joyful. But some of the happiest moments you can remember like that. Why? Because it's a core memory. And, and I don't think it's a mistake that Inside Out 2, if you've seen that, if I'm gonna ruin, you, I'm, uh, ruin it for you, I'm sorry, but the, the antagonist in the movie is anxiety. And I don't think it's a coincidence that the movie portrays this, but how often does anxiety push joy out? It's not just a movie, that is real life, friend. And how many times do we let anxiety take hold and we let, we, we let this root of bitterness, we let all these emotions come in the way of being what God called us to be and that is full of joy. Whatever happened to that old hymn of the church that we used to sing in children's church? Come on, I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Okay, that took way too long. <clears throat> you know why we stopped singing it? Because we are some of the most depressed, most medicated, anxiety-filled, bitter people. And we don't like singing songs like that because it just makes us feel awkward. Because oftentimes we come in here and we lift holy hands and we wanna be joyful, we wanna be joy-filled, but yet singing songs like that hurts because it causes us to have to change some things. It causes us to have to actually truly reflect on where I am and where I'm not. And see, Psalm chapter 51, verse 11, after a, a very traumatic experience happened in David's life, David said, cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me and then he says this, restore to me the joy of your salvation. And a lot of times we get that mixed up and we like to quote, misquote it, and I know I've done it, the joy of my salvation. It's not my salvation, it's his. Yeah. And it's the joy that comes to me. Can you go back to that place where, where you were at that altar or you were seated in your seat and you accepted Jesus? Can you go back to that place in that moment where Jesus restored you and renewed you and did something miraculous in your life? Can you go back to that moment right there where you accepted his salvation and the awe and the joy that came over you because of what God did in your life and made you new? That's what it's all about. Now watch this. It doesn't mean that you're just gonna experience joy and joy, unspeakable joy every day of your life because we all know that sometimes we just get hit with all the, all the things and all the stuff. But watch this. He says, and uphold me with your willing spirit. Then, so once you experience that joy of his salvation, then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Can I remind you and help you today that it's really hard for people to come to know Jesus when you operate in bitterness? And David knew this. David knew, if I'm gonna continue to live out my life for God and his kingdom, I'm gonna have to change the way I'm living. I'm gonna have to change the emotions in which I'm operating in. And it's gonna take me operating in the joy of his salvation in order for people to come and know him. Because I can't be stuck where I am because of what I've gone through. I've gotta operate in the joy, joy, unspeakable joy. You don't have to be better over what you've done who you've been, but you can be better because of what God has promised you, and that is yes and amen. Watch what happens in Hebrews chapter 12, verse two. And I find it interesting that Hebrews 12 sounds a lot like Romans 14. Now again, some people uh, argue and some people have different, different thoughts here, and some people think that Paul wrote portions of Hebrews and and others say that different authors wrote it, but I just find this uncanny resemblance, which I don't think is a coincidence for us today. 
Hebrews chapter 12, verse two says, looking to Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. You were his joy. Maybe you've heard us say that before, but you were the joy. You were what was on his mind when he was willing to endure the cross. You were why he picked up the cross in the first place. You, you were the reason why he bore the nails in his hands and in his feet. You were the reason why he bore the stripes on his back. You were the reason. And that's not joyful. I'd be bitter. I would be upset. Thank God it wasn't me. But thank God it was him. Because for his sacrifice, for his endurance of the cross in that scene, it was you that was on his mind. And in the same passage, the writer is writing this out. 12, one and two, and he skips down in verse 14. And then he says, strive for peace with everyone and holiness, which is righteousness, without which no one will see the Lord. Without purity and righteousness, we will not see God. We gotta operate in that. We gotta be willing to adopt it and, and clothe ourselves in righteousness. Strive for peace with everyone, holiness, righteousness. In verse 15, see to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness, mm, there it is, springs up and causes trouble, and by it, many become defiled. You see, when we operate in the root of bitterness, we defile ourselves. We, we, we get to this place where, where, where we disqualify ourselves because, because of what we choose to operate in, because of an emotion that we adopt as our identity, because what we've gone through and what has happened to us. We get to this place where bitterness becomes just a daily pill that we take and we ingest. And we wonder why people aren't coming to know Jesus around us. And we wonder why people around us are being affected by the, by the emotions that we put off. We don't have to operate in bitterness anymore. There is this uncanny resemblance between the two passages of scripture that we're reading today and that one. And in order to get rid of the root of bitterness, you have to look to the author and the perfecter of your faith who demonstrated his love for us in this, that he focused on the joy that was set before him, you and me, in order to provide us a way out of the eternal grips of hell so that we could obtain the grace of God through a fully restored relationship with him. The last ingredient I wanna share with you today is flour. I know, right? Y'all crazy, I ain't eating that. <laughs> now watch this, watch this. Some of y'all know this. I had to kind of study this out. This was, this was an interesting fact for me. Um, I did not realize that flour had so much bacteria in it. It's actually, if I were to take a, a taste test of this, it actually could make me really sick. Not like, not like just make me make a face, disgusting, I'm not interested but this could really affect my body. This, this really could affect who I am every day. If, if I were to ingest this, now here's the thing, flour, come on, that makes a roux, come on somebody, come on Cajuns, y'all know what I'm talking about. Put some flour, make some bread, some sourdough, hey. Flour, flour makes a lot of great things. Flour does a lot, flour can, flour can make a lot of great ingredients, but on its own by itself, it's dangerous. In fact, flour is very flammable. I don't know if y'all knew that or not, yeah. Pastor Chris showed that to me. <laughs> can we get a lighter? Can we test this out? No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. We don't have permission to do pyrotechnics. Um, but watch this. Flour is only good when it's put through the fire, when it's baked, when it's cooked. And wouldn't you know it, Paul helped us out in Romans chapter 14, verse 17. In order to look like the kingdom of God, you're gonna have to operate in righteousness, righteousness peace, and joy. And he, guess what? He could have just left it at that. 
It's gonna take you operating in righteousness, peace, and joy. Praise God, I can do that. But guess what? It takes someone helping you to operate in that. The Holy Spirit. And wouldn't you know it? Come on, yeah, if you wanna give him praise, give him praise. Throughout Scripture, the Holy Spirit is compared to the fire. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, John the Baptist says this, I will baptize you in water for repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you in Holy Spirit and in fire. Acts 2, verse 2 says, and suddenly there in the upper room, they came from heaven, a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and filled the entire house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames of fire appeared and settled on each of them. You see, church, what could be deadly to me what could be harmful to me is tested in the fire. No matter what I've been through, no matter what I've gone through, no matter what I may be carrying around every day of my life can be burned off through the fire. When we're willing to apply the Holy Spirit to our lives and have Him live through us and use the fire of God, guess what? These things can be burned off and we can operate with the kingdom of God like He intended for us to live. Romans 8, 28, and we know, you know where that knowing comes from? The Holy Spirit. It's the confidence of knowing that for those who love God, all things will work together for, for the good, for those who are called according to his purpose. It comes from the Holy Spirit. And friends, church, you have been gifted by God with the Holy Spirit. And you're missing, if you're missing out on this, we have so many, so many messages that we can send you because we want you to know the Holy Spirit. I don't have time today, but I'm closing. I want you to understand this, that these ingredients by themselves, some of them are not good. I love sugar, but too much of it is bad for me. So, so many times the ingredients of our lives the, the temperature of our lives is determined by what we've been through and what we've gone through. So often we allow these things to become the root of our soul and our spirit and we affect those around us. And you may sit here today and you may identify with any one of these ingredients that you've adopted, that you've placed in your life, that you've ingested too much of. But can I remind you today that if you allow God to take the ingredients of your life and no matter what you've gone through, no matter what you've been through, you can allow Jesus to make something masterful. You can allow Jesus to take something, the master chef, and make something holy and make something delicious and make something worthwhile but you gotta allow him, the great chef, heaven's kitchen. You gotta allow him to do the work. You gotta allow him to take you through the process because that's the thing we don't like. We don't like going through the fire because it hurts, but we've gotta allow the Holy Spirit to do work in our lives. Last but certainly not least, I'll make it applicable for you today. You could throw up that scripture. Last, I know, right? I'm not gonna look, because it gets me every time. Because these, these cookies, these cookies we made last night, decorating for Christmas this weekend, getting ready for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Just means I don't have to do it later. But we're making cookies last night, and man, we're stirring and doing all the stuff, and they all helped, and they, they did great. They did awesome. But every time, I look at this scripture, I look at this picture, excuse me, and I'm reminded of, man, where I could be. But I'm thankful for the joy of his salvation because I could be bitter and I could be sharp and snappy and spicy with, with my family and I, I could live unrighteous living. I could do all of these things if, if not for God, but because of God, I can look at this and I can see what God can do. I look at this and I see what God can redeem. I look at this and see what he can restore because I'm willing to do this and I can come to him broken. He can put back the pieces of my life and make it whole and make it beautiful and make it worthwhile because that's what it's all about. For a family unit being godly, holy, righteous, full of peace, full of joy in the Holy Spirit. That's what God wants for you, church.
That's what he wants. Hey, thank you so much for joining us today for New Hope Online. Our vision here at New Hope is to meet people and grow closer to God together. So we value your engagement to our online experience, and we look forward to meeting with you and connecting with you in person in the future. If you go to EuniceChurch.com, we have a connect card tab where you can fill out a connect card so that number one, we can simply connect with you. And number two, we can help resource you to become the person that God has called you to be. We're so excited that God is meeting you where you are, and we believe that God has more for you. We would love to see you in the future. Thanks for tuning in.